Uh, my 6505 profile, a Mesa 4x12 V30s IR, a Horizon device's nano attack, and my guitars are turned to Z. You're breaking my heart, Glenn. Don't you miss the days where guitar players tried to find their own sound and not sound just like everybody else? What the hell happened to metal? We went from all these amazing guitar players doing their own thing to becoming an echo chamber. Echo chamber. Echo chamber. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now, I just want to start off and say that I'm not trying to go after Glenn and start a lot of drama. I actually have a lot of respect for him and everything that he's done for the online recording and metal communities. I especially like when he goes after myths that guitar players believe. But I feel like this needs to be addressed. Like, oh God, guitar players like gear that sounds good to them? Oh no, for fuck's sake. Plus this boomer idea that all these guitar players back in the day were just so original and finding their own sounds, I feel like needs to be addressed. Now I'm addressing this because I feel like this is a lot of elitism and gatekeeping in the guitar and metal community and God knows we don't need any more of that. Now this idea that everyone was so original back in the day, the good old days when everyone found their own sound, right? Definitely wouldn't be that a bunch of old rock and metal bands were using Marshall Plexis, right? It wouldn't be that like ACDC, Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, Jimi Hendrix, Iron Maiden, and even Glenn's favorite Judas Priest were all using Marshall Plexis, right? Oh, except that's exactly what f***ing happened. You skip ahead to the 80s. 80s thrash metal can basically be defined as a JCM 800 being boosted with some sort of overdrive. You have Megadeth. Anthrax, Slayer, hell, Kerry King from Slayer had his own signature JCM 800. Gary Holt from Exodus and Slayer. Metallica recorded Ride the Lightning, my personal favorite Metallica album, and I think one of the best thrash metal albums ever, with a JCM 800 boosted with a Tube Screamer. And they did kill them all with a modded Plexi. Time periods of music and certain subgenres of music are going to have a sound, and there's nothing wrong with that, and it's kind of always been that way. I mean, think about it. The 90s is synonymous with scoop mids and dual rectifiers. Swedish death metal, you immediately think of an HM2. Early black metal sounds like it was all recorded with a first ad guitar through a tin can. Certain time periods and certain subgenres have a sound. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I don't really think it's the gear that's defining the sound, but really the player and the play style. Zach Wilde on his JCM 800 sounds massively different than Tom Morello on his JCM 800. Mike Tremonti and Cannibal Corpse both are known for using rectifiers, but I think you get your ass kicked for saying that he sounds like Cannibal Corpse. And yeah, Steel Panther and Gojira both use EVH 5153s, but the bands absolutely sound nothing alike. Here's another example, Meshuggah. They've used a ton of gear over the years. They've used rectifiers, they've used Axe Effects, they recorded an album using stock Cubase plugins. Uh, Bridger got his own Fortin signature Meshuggah amp that was very much Marshall based. And recently in the studio, they posted that they're using an EVH 5153, at least for some of the tones. And regardless of what they've used or are using, they sound like Meshuggah. Now, I'm not saying that gear is meaningless. Of course, gear is important, but it's only important up to the point where you get the sound and feeling that you're looking for. It doesn't matter if everyone else is using it or not, as long as it works for you and gets the sound you want. That's the important part. Music isn't getting stale and boring because people are gravitating towards gear that sounds good. It's getting that way because a bunch of people are trying to be Meshuggah and Periphery clones. And I think this is a sentiment that Glenn himself argues in his 13 ways to avoid sounding like every other metal band video. Look, it's really easy to place the blame on modern technology for the lack of originality. And while it's partially responsible as it's the easiest thing in the world to download a preset pack, the truth is most bands just aren't that unique or even trying to be no matter what they tell you. Clone bands were rampant in the pre-digital days. In the late 80s, there were a million poison wannabes. Most of those bands were called Easy, and they all had the name copyrighted. At least that's what they kept telling me. Then Nirvana came along and replicated itself like a virus. On the heavier side, there was Pantera and a million clones. And in the late 90s, there were a million bands that sounded just like corn. Today, the big thing is 
prog metal. And while it's produced some really great players, it seems like bands are getting their names from an architectural magazine that they found in a dentist's office. Because we sure as hell don't get fun names anymore like Buster Cherry or the Rubber Band. Instead, we get tangents, parallels, and foundations. I'm sure their records will be awe-inspiring. Look, it's perfectly fine to be inspired by a great band, but when you wind up as a carbon copy of the band that inspired you, nobody is going to give a flying f Now, I really agree with a lot of the points in that video about people just stylistically kind of copying each other and just trying to be who their influences are. I also think, and Glenn feels this way too, a big reason that music is kind of sounding stale is we're over-editing it. We're taking the humanity out of it. We're trying to make it sound perfect by time aligning everything and correcting every little possible mistake. We're taking all the groove out of everything and making it sound robotic and it ends up just sounding boring. The moral of the story is play what works for you. Play what sounds good for you because if it sounds good to you, it is good. Don't worry about what everyone else thinks about the gear you're playing. Don't worry if everyone says that you're using everything else everyone else is using so you're gonna be generic. Use what works for you. And for people like Glenn and in the community that feel this way, stop complaining about what other people are using. Worry about the music. Don't worry about if somebody wants to use a 6505 or 5150 or a dual rectifier or any other cabinet or amp sim. Don't worry about it. As long as their music is good and they sound good, that is what's important. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay metal.